hometown of Georgetown this Sunday. Legendary Larry D is joining me right now for his second appearance on Triple Threat Wrestling Radio. Good evening, Larry. What's up, man? Hey, what's up, Jimmy? Thanks for having me. Thank you so much, man. Good to hear from you. Uh, the last time I saw you in person um, was a primetime wrestling show. I think it was at uh, Vassell's. I think it was last year. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's probably so. I haven't seen you in a while myself. Yes, and um, and uh, the f- first time I interviewed you was I think two some years ago. Yeah, and maybe maybe two and a half years. Two and a half years ago, and primetime wrestling was just getting started. It's just trying to, you know, you know. Was, yeah, was, yeah, yeah. It started to pick back up. Yeah, it was. It was. It was born. Pretty much, and, yeah. and now it has evolved into one of the elite indie shows in the Kentucky area. And before we get into this busy weekend you have planned, talk about the evolution of primetime wrestling. You being the owner and a wrestler, uh, how do you feel about the company now uh, as it as it, as it evolves throughout the last couple of years? Uh, well, the history of it started. Uh, probably 10 years ago. It was open for about one year. And then it kind of just it just shut down. And, and, and then maybe, maybe, to be honest, about four years ago, uh, it opened in the Midway area at the, the Midway Theater downtown. And then from there, we just started to pick up more venues, more towns, and gain more attention uh, to what it's grown to now. And back years ago, uh, we had a lot of really good wrestlers, just like today, you know. So uh, that's one thing about primetime wrestling. It's always been known for having some of the top talent around. And, you know, back back years ago, you had guys like Rob the Bomb Williams. You had Suicide. You had Angel. You had Bobby Blade. Uh, myself. We had Payne. We had, I mean, just Justin Idol, Donnie Green, The Steels. You know, the list goes on and on of, of talent that came through. And then... You know, you fast forward 10 years, and now you've got Stan Sierra, you've got Ronnie Roberts, you have the ATMs, you have Max Sled, you have the list, it's just piled up. And I have guys from the NWF as well down there, and those guys are extremely talented beyond belief. And let me just say that I'm happy to see how far primetime wrestling has come. Uh, the fan base has grown in uh, multiple areas in the Kentucky, in the state of Kentucky. And Mm -hmm. um, it's just uh, the talent, you know, with with Roberts, with the likes of of, of Al Steele, with the likes of Fiji, with the likes of yourself, and uh, with Amazing Maria, and just, you know, the list goes on and on. And and it's... it's just starting to get. It's just starting to really go on a whole nother level, and I'm, I'm proud of you not just as a talent, but I'm proud of you uh, as an owner of how, uh, how you've been able to handle, you know, not your business, not just in the ring, but behind the scenes as well, and just making prime time wrestling a well oiled machine, and that the fans have truly supported this product. I mean, mm. I mean it, that that has to make you proud, not just a, not just as a talent, but as uh, a guy in charge, man. Pretty much, don't it? Oh yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm very proud of of what it's done and where it's come. Um, you know, I'm not the only owner. You know, a lot of people don't know that, and and, and there's 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 a number. You know, it's just a lot of guys that come together to make prime time wrestling what it is, and it's it's just guys that come there and enjoy the brotherhood first and foremost. Um, I feel like when, when not only when the fans come to primetime wrestling, they have fun, but the guys that come out and, and perform and entertain, they, they love it. They love the environment. They love, they love the camaraderie. They love the brotherhood that comes with it. I, I feel like primetime wrestling has that above no other, you know, and, and it's just amazing the friendships that are made back there and and one thing that that all of us can agree on is is when you buy a primetime wrestling ticket you know that that you're getting every penny worth and that's just something that we 
strive to do that we've always strived to do, and I feel like we we accomplished that 99.9% of the time. The last time I seen you in the bingo hall, it was one of the greatest wrestling matches in the pro I've ever seen. And it was a match between you versus Shane Mercer in a steel cage match for United Wrestling Federation and what turned out to be Bobby Blay's last appearance. And it, and after that match, after the, the crowd went bonkers, Bobby Blay say, gave you high praise. A guy that has been in the business for over 25 plus years. And he said, and I quote, that Larry D is the future of Kentucky wrestling. For a guy to hear that from a man that has been through it all, how does that make you feel to hear that from uh, not someone that not only you looked up to, but someone that you have worked with throughout the years? Oh, it made me feel great. Uh, you know, anytime that you have a guy in the likes of Bobby Blade uh, make mention to, to anything like that, it, it really it really does boost you and and you know it makes it makes you work that much harder. It makes you want to work that much harder. It makes you want to achieve more and makes you want to go that extra mile. And and you know Bobby Blade has has been around and, and he's taken every bump known to man. You know I always joke to him. Uh, he's like the Mick Foley of Kentucky wrestling. You know he always he, he wasn't scared to to take the risk and 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 he's one of those guys that night in and night out if you needed him to go. Uh, ringing out, he'd do it great. If you need him to go manage, he was he was the top manager on the card 90% of the time. And if you need him to wrestle, even if he didn't wrestle a year, he could get in there that night and, and never miss a beat. So if anyone knows professional wrestling, it's it's Bobby Blade, and and, and I'll, I'll tell that to anyone. And, and it was just it was an honor to work with him. It was an honor to 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 be a part of of his last uh, time out there. Uh, if anyone knows wrestling, it's Bobby Blade, and, and, and when he said that, I just I got coaches all over, and I love Bobby Blade. Well, I've known him since I was 18 years old, and actually longer than that. But professionally, I've known Bobby since I was 18, and 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 I always rib him about this. Is I remember as a child watching Young Simba uh, wrestle years ago when I was just a kid watching, and it's just an honor to have a guy like that, you know, give me that praise and. and and put me over like that. It was something else. I mean, Bobby Blade was truly one of a kind. You know, my only regret is that I didn't get the chance to see more of him. I've only had Oh, yeah, you missed a lot because Bobby Blade really, he was really something else to watch in the wrestling ring. I was only able to see probably the last three, four years of his career and that's when I actually started going to indie shows. Mm -hmm. right? I was one of those fans that just focused on WWE, WCW, and other uh, companies. Like, I was aware of indie wrestling. I was aware how much it meant to wrestling in general. It's just mm -hmm. that I never had a chance to attend a w indie wrestling show until... I start going to UWF, and then I start going to OVW. Then I started mm -hmm. to go to PTW, and WCCW, and KZW, and, and among others, you know. And that's probably my biggest regret as a wrestling fan is never went to any shows when I first started, got into wrestling. And I feel like there are still fans out there that may not be aware of what indie wrestling really is and how much it has meant to wrestling in general. Like, you look at the wrestlers or you see on TV, majority of them, I'm not saying all of them, some may come from different forms of entertainment or whatever, but a lot of them that you see on TV, regardless of major companies that they work for, most of them got their start in the indies that that's oh yeah that's how that's how that that's how it, it starts you know before 
And if you have a, if you was good, if you had a lot of buzz, if you had a lot of attention, a huge fan base, you probably be lucky to get a, to someone from those major companies to give you a look or whatever. And you being in the indies for, for yourself, like how do you feel about how fans, yeah, they watch, see what they see on the TV and all, but they may not be fully aware of what of indie wrestling out there. Like, what's your take on that? Well, I, I believe, I believe that they, if you just think back on it, some of your top superstars today were independent wrestlers. I mean, if you look right now, you got Sami Zayn. He was an independent wrestler. He wrestled with Ring of Honor all over the country. You have Samoa Joe. You know, you, know, you have Daniel Bryan. You know, uh, Triple H even started. And, you know, years ago, before developmental territory started, you know, a lot of the guys that you've seen on the WWF still came from independent wrestling. They still went around and traveled, and, and they, they booked themselves just like we did. So when you, when you look at it that way, um, I feel like that, that there's still guys that come up from those ranks that can make it. And I'll, I'll add one more person to that list who had a hell of a debut this past Sunday. Mr. Kevin Owens. I mean, oh, I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. I mean, that match with Cena, wow. That was just incredible. Um, and it, it was just, it was mind-blowing. Like, people are considering it the best debut in, in maybe in a very long time for Owens. For a guy, it, to put this in perspective, it took him 15 years to be on the WWE just to get an opportunity and this guy comes out and goes up against Cena of all people and and just shut it down he shut it oh, down I agree. he uh and, you know kudos to Cena like he, he's gonna have his moments but all the praise go to Owens for just showing that hey I I started from the bottom and look where I'm at now. And he's the NXT champion for a reason. Um, so I, I, I people may say prisoner of the moment, but you know that. Was, and now they're gonna face each other again uh, in about a week from the Sunday. My only my only issue with that is that after a great match like that, you don't have you don't give them these two time to, you know, build up for the rematch like you get you, that's not the third pay-per-view in five weeks third pay-per-view in five weeks like whoever is scheduling i don't know what to tell you but uh enough about those guys back to you and ptw uh busy weekend paris tomorrow winchester saturday uh your hometown you're calling it the homecoming bingo hall this sunday Let's start off with Paris first. I hear there's a lottery, like a, like a uh, I hear some big things going on in Paris. Let's focus on Paris first. Uh, talk okay. about what, what's, what's planned. What's the plans for um, the Paris show? Well, the Paris show, uh, the main event is a six-man scramble for uh, the primetime wrestling heavyweight title. Um, it has Fiji Wildman, myself, Alex Angel, Stan Sierra, Ronnie Roberts, and Chucky Smooth. Uh, we'll all be in there at the same time, and one of us will walk out the champion. Um, the other matches will just be a, a, a lethal lottery draw. I mean, uh, all the, the there's going to be eight names put in the hat, and we're going to have a fan draw the names out, and they're just going to go and and give their best. So everybody, be on the lookout. Prime time wrestling, busy weekend, uh, Paris, Kentucky. Uh, I believe the doors, the, the show's going to start either 7 or 8. Well, no, the show starts at 7.30, and the gates will open at 6.30. All right, so everybody be on the lookout for that. Um, I checked out the video from an individual. <laughs> uh, Mr. Ravish and Warning Roberts, he has some things to say about the Man Scramble match uh, that for that title. Um You've seen it. A lot of people have seen it. You care to comment on, on Mr. Roberts' thoughts 
on this particular match? <laughs> well, I think that uh, Ronnie Roberts, uh, he, he had the title and he couldn't keep it. It was that simple. I think Stan Sierra is a true champion. Uh, I think that Stan Sierra done what he can do for two years to uh, keep the title. And Ronnie Roberts looked up and he got the pin and then turned right around two months later and lost it to me who has proven myself as a champion for the last 14 years. So that's pretty simple. Ronnie Roberts is great, but I just don't think he's ready to be a champion. And, uh, and some more info on the Paris show. Uh, it's going to be in Bourbon County Fairgrounds. It yeah, Bur a, Bourbon County Fairgrounds and it's, uh, in Paris, Kentucky. It's 30 Legion Drive. And uh, it is an outside event. It will be inside yep. just in case if there's Mother Nature decides to get involved. Um, let's talk about the Winchester show. That's going to be at the YCMA gym. Uh, 645 West Meat Drive, bell time. That is at 730. Talk about what's planned for the Winchester show. Uh, what's planned is, is, is Stan Sierra is going to wrestle against... Uh, young guy named uh, Bo Bond, who is, who is uh, known to the Winchester area. He's from there. Uh, he has a pretty good following up there. Um, and then, you know, the you also have whoever is fortunate enough to win the, the PTW title tomorrow night will go on to defend Saturday night against whoever wants to step up to the plate. You know, we'll have guys like uh, ATM, myself, Max, Ronnie Roberts, Stan, Chucky Smooth. Um, I mean, the list goes on to just what well, you always get at PTW anyway. And and it's always exciting up there. It's a really great building, really nice building up there, really clean. And uh, it, the fans seem to be just as loud as they was years ago with the NWA. Again, the, do uh, the bell time at 7.30 p.m. at Winchester's YCMA gym. That is a inside event and of course Sunday your hometown Georgetown Kentucky I posted on Facebook the, uh, the other day familiar names with terms to a familiar place to wrap up PTW's event uh, Georgetown at the bingo hall uh, there are five matches scheduled for that event and I think I have the uh, the banner in front of me, but while I look for it, I, actually I have it in front of me right now. Here it is, Homecoming. That's the theme of the event. You got Stan Sierra going up against Ronnie Roberts. Yourself going up against uh, Taggart. Uh, then you have Lennox Norris, who people may know from OVW, going up against. Max Sled, ATM versus KC uh, Chaos, and Chucky Smooth versus Big Al Steel. And um, a similar time, 6.30, bell time, doors open at 6. Um, that being said, how does it feel to now have PTW in your neck of the woods this Sunday, man? It feels great. It, uh, it feels great. I it's been asked for a long time, and the opportunity came about. The, the building owners had contacted the PTW office and, and uh, showed interest to bring wrestling back to the bingo hall. And, you know, uh, we get messages every day from the fan base uh, up to the point of, you know, when are you guys coming, when are you guys coming. And just the excitement over the past two and a half years has been uh, crazy and 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 if you notice in Paris, there's quite a bit of older Georgetown fans that will travel to come watch primetime wrestling, and now they have the opportunity to to see it there in Georgetown. And there's a big, big, huge buzz about it, and everyone seems to to be super excited about Sunday night. So, all you people in Paris. Winchester and Georgetown, especially the Georgetown people, as Larry pointed out, been wanting this company to be at Georgetown. Well, 
This is your shot. This is your chance. This is your opportunity. You know, primetime wrestling, they do a few shows a month. You know, so you better make the most of this weekend. You have three shows to go to. You can either go to one or go to all three if you choose. I'm going to try to get to the Georgetown. And I may even try to get to the Paris show tomorrow. Uh, my Friday nights are officially open. Now that SmackDown and Impact are no longer on Friday nights. So I'm, I'm, I am open to do whatever on Friday nights. So I'm going to see if I can make it to the Paris event. Uh, but Larry, thank you so much for your time, man. Congrats on the success of primetime wrestling thus far and many more years to come. Um, and have a great wrestling weekend, man. You take care of yourself. And uh, uh, shout out to everybody at PTW and uh, continued success. Thanks, Kenny. I appreciate it. We look forward to seeing you. All right. You have a good night, man. All right. You too, bud. All right. Bye-bye. That was Primetime Wrestling's owner and talent, legendary Larry D, joining me here on Triple Threat Wrestling Radio. Primetime Wrestling is on the rise, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't know, now you know. I don't have a guest confirmed for